Bud and Doyle are here to save the world, but who's going to save the world from Bud and Doyle? Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. <laughs> the Biodome, a pure self-contained environment where five scientists are about to be sealed off from every conceivable form of contamination, except one. <laughs> Check out that mall, man. Our dream is finally at hand. What kind of mall is this? Get out of here! The doors are sealed for one year. We're stuck here. That's right. 12 months? Yes. 52 weeks? Yes. 385 days? No. The whole world is watching as Bud and Doyle... <laughs> are separated from their loved ones. Learn about endangered species. They're the rarest Lepidoptera in the world. <laughs> Experience nature firsthand. And become world-renowned protectors of the planet. Purple Stinky Punch, or hemp, is an excellent source of photosynthesis. Just because we're stuck in a bubble, doesn't mean we can't cause any trouble. On three, three, This winter, welcome to paradise. Holly Shore and Stephen Baldwin. Trick or treat. Are doing whatever it takes. I feel like a duck billed platypus. <laughs> to put the mental <laughs> back in environmental. Well, could you at least make it taste like chicken? Otherwise, I'm gonna shrivel up like a supermodel. <gasps> I am so fat. Nobody likes me. People didn't like me in high school. Biodome. I am in. Iron Man does whatever and I can. Hold it. Spider-Man. Come on, what do you think, you're some rocket scientist? Yes. Sorry. This is I Hope You Suffer. My name is Nathan. It's Kit. And for this first bonus episode, we watched Biodome from 1996. Oh, yeah. A, a Kit-approved movie. <laughs> Damn right. Um, I had not seen this movie since probably 1996. And DVD. I, um, I do not. I'm pretty sure I had it on VHS at one point too. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure I saw this in a theater, and honestly, I've probably saw it on like Comedy Central or some shit after that, but I don't remember. I, do. I don't think Comedy Central even sinks that low. Oh, they did in like the '90s and <laughs> like late '90s when like all they aired was like just the same eight movies constantly. Instead of Polly Shorathon, I'm like, well, we might as well show Biodome, I, I guess. I watched Airheads on Comedy Central every time it aired, which was like nine times a day for like a year. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't necessarily have a fuck it like a, a history with this movie. I saw it in the theater, and then like I pretty much probably blocked it out. You uh, you seem to enjoy it though. Yeah, it. It's my favorite idiot movie. <laughs> like when I'm just like, everything's garbage, I want to die, I need something really stupid, Biodome, <laughs> always there for me. I, I feel like this movie could like, it's just, would be a good kind of background noise movie. Oh yeah. Because like, it's stupid and it's not going to be like, a bummer. Yeah, you can you can tune in for all of the quality jokes. <laughs> <laughs> There are many. 
uh, it's also like interesting because like when I was looking up trivia and stuff about the movie, almost all of it was just how like everybody regretted being in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> You know it's bad when Stephen Baldwin and Polly Shore regret being in a movie. Like, I don't like. I they're like one of the stories is how Alec Baldwin basically like told Stephen Baldwin that if he did this movie, it was going to ruin his career. Well, Stephen Baldwin would have never had a career anyway. It's fine. <laughs> He's in a goddamn movie called Snake Man. I mean, it sounds like his career is doing pretty good then. <laughs> <laughs> Snake Man seems very I hope you suffer quality, so I approve. It's awful. Um, We're not doing it. I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it voluntarily and I hated myself. I, I also started watching this and I was like, how the fuck did Kylie Minogue get in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess like she said, like she's been quoted as saying it's like the worst career move she's had and that her dad still makes fun of her for it. <laughs> All I'm saying is Tenacious D shows up. And they're doing great, okay? Literally the only part of the movie I was like, fuck yes. I'd still sing that song to myself. <laughs> That's what we did season freaking tease. I will go to bat for Tenacious D any day. So, this movie was directed by Jason Bloom. It was written by five fucking people. Wow! <laughs> Five I, people to put this fucking thing together. Uh, uh, that's all. I don't understand how that's possible. But um, Adam Leff is one of the writers who I wrote down, wrote Last Action Hero and PCU, which are both perfect movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mitchell Peck, Jason Blumenthal, Kip Koenig, Nick Koenig Scott... Arcano, um, yeah, has entirely too many people writing one stupid comedy. <laughs> a stupid comedy with a fifteen million dollar budget. Yeah, and I it cost a lot to build that dome. For some reason, like I remembered this movie being like a success, and apparently it was not. Because <laughs> like, sadly, you think Can about you it, what the world would be like if it was a success. Well, like, you, like, cause Polly Shore like immediately had like eight fucking other movies after this, so I was just like, oh, this movie must have done like really well, and like people know this movie, so I was like, oh, this was a success, and it made like no money back. Like every Polly Shore movie was released in the same year, right? <laughs> like nineteen ninety six was just here's Polly Shore, everyone, just was... deal with it now. Did it see No Man come out before this? I think so. I think so. And Cino Man, I feel like, probably holds up better. Like, I feel like... Uh, are you saying Biodome doesn't hold up, sir? <laughs> well, like, I feel like Polly Shore works better as, like, the best friend of the main character yeah. as opposed to, like, a main Not character. The <laughs> like... That's the real problem here. Yeah. Like, he's carrying this movie because Stephen Baldwin is fucking terrible. Like Stephen Baldwin but has an immaculate sense of fashion. Oh man, like black and white cargo shorts, a chain wallet, which I will stand for. <laughs> uh, official stance of I hope you suffer is chain wallet should come back in style. Very pro chain wallet. <laughs> like Stephen Baldwin in this movie, just like like Paulie Shore, as dumb as it sounds, like I believe is that character. Stephen Baldwin feel like feels like a forty five year old man trying to play an eighteen year old in this movie. <laughs> it rules. And I also forgot that Joey Lauren Adams was in this, and also like Rose McGowan shows up at some point, and this is like the most nineties movie imaginable. <laughs> uh, so this movie. Uh, as we've said, stars Polly Shore as Bud, Stephen Baldwin as Doyle, Joey Lauren Adams as Monique, Teresa Hill as Jen, um, Kylie Minogue as Dr. Petra, and then basically just like a bunch of other like people that kind of 
aren't super important to the plot. Just like a bunch of scientists that are just there to deal Henry with... Henry Gibson as William Leakey, the, the funder of the whole project, which you may know as uh, the neighbor from The Burbs. Yeah. I'll say I had that written down. I had... Underrated. Um, Kevin West, who plays TC, because he was in Killer Tomatoes Eat France. Uh, Loki may be the best character in the movie, if we're being honest. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, and then I wrote down Denise Douse, who plays Olivia, because she was on Seinfeld. And gotta have that Seinfeld connection. Obviously. Possible. Um... And then, legit, the most, like, famous person in this movie is William Atherton as Dr. Noah Faulkner. <laughs> yeah, he is the dickhead reporter from Die Hard, and uh, he was Walter Peck, the head of the EPA in Ghostbusters. Yeah, I knew him from Ghostbusters. I've seen Die Hard probably since it came out. I watch it, like, once a month. <laughs> um, I would say... My favorite character in this movie is Monique's stepdad. Or I guess her oh, yeah. stepdad. <laughs> what a what is his name? Bud? No, like it's um oh, uh, like Ronald maybe. Uh I feel like I wrote it down at some point, but maybe not. I'm pretty sure it was like Ronald. Russell. Um Yeah, he's like, Russell of the Russell, best yeah. jokes in the movie. Like, t towards the end when, like, he's leaving the party at the dome and he's got, like, they got the door locked and he's just like, oh, I need out of here. Like, I legitimately <laughs> laugh at that scene. I love that he gets their name wrong, like, in every scene. He calls them Bob and Daryl. <laughs> That's the best joke in the movie is that he just, just like, doesn't know their name. <laughs> there's, there's one part, so he's, he injured his bladder rollerblading, so he's been, like, on the couch the entirety of the movie. And Bud and Doyle escape the dome, and they're making a phone call to try and order, uh, like, pizza or burgers or something. And Russell's the delivery guy. And I'm like, Russell, how'd you get a job? And he just goes, fucking President Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Baldwin deadpans, you had sex with President Clinton? God, so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Uh, it almost brings me to tears every time because it's so dumb. <laughs> like, talking about this after the second movie we watched, I'm just appreciating it more because I'm like, <laughs> at least these are jokes as opposed to, like, everything in the past. Yeah, so our other movie was The Pest, which, if you haven't seen it in a while, it is horribly racist. I, so much actual racism and awful jokes. I don't even think they're jokes. Like, <laughs> we'll get fuck. We'll get to that. Like, I, I could talk about the <laughs> opening scene of the pest for two hours. <laughs> for we should do a bonus episode where it's video and we can just recreate the opening to the pest. One hundred percent, we'll do that. And I'm gonna start the YouTube channel now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this movie opens. With, like, news footage and kind of, like, I get, I, I kind of just, like, news footage and stuff about, like, environmental disasters and the dome being built. Um, and you're, like, you're introduced to Bud and Doyle pretty quickly playing rock, paper, scissors, which <laughs> some reason plays a very massive role in this movie. <laughs> Friends need a system, okay? <laughs> it worked It worked for Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward and Tremors. Why can't it work for Bud and Doyle in Biodome? That's a good point. It's a movie. <laughs> movie we can't, we movie can't movie base movie. all major life decisions on rock, paper, scissors like in Tremors. Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> I mean, I make all my life decisions on Kevin Bacon movies, so. <laughs> but they are playing rock, paper, scissors on who is going to be the one to get hit in the face with this book so they can pretend they got injured so they don't have to go to, like, an environmental march. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. 
This has been the first time that, like, I legitimately feel like I suffered through stuff <laughs> for this podcast. <laughs> Just think of how much worse it's going to be talking about the pest. Oh, God, I can't. <laughs> and so, like... They play rock, paper, scissors, Doyle loses and has to, like... Like, Bud goes back to the op- a complete opposite end of the house and just, like, runs at him with this book and just smashes and him. nails in the him in the forehead. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So, well, <coughs> then uh, their girlfriends show up. And uh, Polly Shore walks out and breaks the news to them that they can't, do- they can't go because Bud has-, Bud has injured himself. Like... The bookshelf fell on him, or I believe was the excuse. And he says that he is trying to free the mahi mahi that they have on their on their wall. I feel like at one point they say that something about how he fell, but he fell face first into the book. <laughs> that sounds right. Oh, Look God. at his this ring, and he's just laying there, like twitching his hand. And he's got like that fucking like globe imprint on his forehead yeah so there's there's like a globe on the front of the book and when his girlfriend goes over to check on him and wipes his hair out of the way you can very clearly see the imprint and they realize what they have done the the <laughs> jig is up like i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be in an like encyclopedia it's like some volume of one I think so. but it's it's pretty fucking good <laughs> i don't believe those two would have an encyclopedia in their home the yeah, i see that's what i was thinking perspective biodome i uh i genuinely like i like the the part like i think it's fun like Polly shore's acting when he's running at him with the book it's <laughs> like perfect 90s Polly shore and it's like, like out to the side and shit like and like screaming <laughs> yeah the scream what i think does it but it's like everything else is just like every scene is i'm just like Polly shore's really not bad in this but like then steven baldwin does something and i'm like jesus christ <laughs> it get like he gets real bad when they actually get into the dome um so after monique and jen realize that they like faked this injury to get out of going to this march. Um, they leave. Uh, Bud and Doyle are like, the next thing you see of them, they're like driving. Or do they go to... They're like out. No, they're, uh, they're, they're still at home and uh, they decide, the girlfriends decide to call them and play a prank on them and say that they're with some really hot swimmer oh, dudes yeah. out at, like, Vasquez Lake. So, they get they get real upset, and Stephen Baldwin calls swimmers grape smugglers, and they decide to drive out there to check out this kegger that the girls have been invited to. Like, that whole scene is real stupid. <laughs> like, it's... Just that thing? You would think, like, there would have been a part in this movie where, like, I mean, I guess they kind of do, but not really, but, like, where they, like, legitimately are like, oh, well, like, you know, maybe being nice to the environment is good, but they, like, never do. Like, the oh, there's, most... a whole, uh, there's, like, a whole montage where they save the dome. I would say, like, the most is they save the dome, but, you know, like, immediately afterwards, they're just, like... Men without hats. <laughs> I don't know if they ever actually like fully planned a sequel to this movie, but I would one hundred percent go see the sequel where they like or the they, nuclear power plant. Yeah, they set it up. If they had a sequel where they were like denuclearizing everything, <laughs> like that would be incredible. It just becomes class of Nukem High. <laughs> um, so like yeah, like, Bud Bud Doyle immediately are like jealous and drive out to where. They were told this, like, keggers at, and no one's there. It's all super empty. Like, it's just the middle of the desert. Yeah, like, the lake sucks. But it's full of trash. Which Bud and Doyle immediately add to. Because they are garbage people. <laughs> Literally. Um, the next thing is them driving, and 
Doyle has to pee, and so they decide to stop at a mall, which is actually the dome, which <laughs> I would like to take umbrage uh, with because it's not a dome. <laughs> it's not even remotely a dome. Um, there are several other issues I have with this alleged dome that we will get to. <laughs> yeah, like the the layout of it makes zero sense. I just can only assume it's something that was like already built that they were just like, oh, we use this. Um, they get to this place that they like the dome where they think it's a mall, and they're the opening day, the day they're locking all of the scientists in. So there's like a big celebration with a bunch of people out front. Yeah, this is when like I was like, how the fuck did Kylie Minogue get trapped into this movie? Money. I I mean I guess I for fifteen million dollars though like. There's no way people in this movie made that much money. Cause there's, I'd be in it. I mean, well, but, like, if you think about it, like, in general, just all the shit in the dome had to cost a pretty good amount of money. I'm sure Pauly Shore and St- Stephen Baldwin probably made a pretty decent amount. Like, I can't imagine everybody else in this movie made that much money. It's called artistic integrity, Nathan, okay? <laughs> They believed in this film. Kylie Minogue was just like, I have to do this. This is going to be... It's got a good message about the environment. This will will be my Titanic. (laughs) Even though Titanic was not out yet. (laughs) Biodome Titanic crossover. They build the bubble on the new Titanic. No, the Titanic crashes into the dome. In space. (laughs) The the dome looks like an iceberg floating in space. (laughs) I feel I will, I guess technically Futurama beat us to that because there was a Titanic in oh, space. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Um, fucking Matt Groening. Everything's been on The Simpsons or Futurama. So they are like they show up at the dome. They're given speeches before the scientists are going to get locked in. Um. Bud and Doyle try and get into the dome, thinking it's a mall, and, like, get stopped by security, so Bud immediately throws a bunch of fireworks to distract them, but, like... <laughs> after after threatening the security guard with some sweet karate moves, like... Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm like, I really wish I, like, as I was watching this, I was like, I'm gonna go watch some, like, Polly Shore clips from when he was on MTV on, like, YouTube, and then just, like, I never did, because, like... I can't remember if he was just, like, doing karate shit all the time, but I feel like he did as, like, part of his He shit. seems like someone who would be doing karate all the time in his real life. <laughs> That's probably accurate. <laughs> Polly Shore, karate master. Uh, so, after they throw these fireworks and, like, security runs off, they go into the dome. Doyle immediately just, like, pisses in the rainforest stream. <laughs> like they don't even bother looking for a restroom that they went for. <laughs> um, it's like this is a weird mall. I'm gonna piss in this river. Like I did legitimately laugh. Like when they they go to close the dome and the scientists are all waving and Bud and Doyle just like walk <laughs> up behind them, <laughs> like <laughs> just waving like they like just no idea what's going on. The, the look on Doc Leakey's face is incredible. It's the the shock of, like, who the fuck are they? It's... What, like, who... Who's the bug scientist? What was his name? Uh, Romulus. He is my favorite person in the dome. Yes, 1,000%. Russell and then him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, like, his, like, his reaction to them all the time, I feel, was just, like, genuine. Like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like he wasn't acting, he was just like, just god so, damn it. Just so irritated dealing with <laughs> Polly Shore and Stephen Baldwin on set every day. Oh my god, it's, can you imagine? <laughs> it's like, the first, the first couple of nights that they're there, like, uh, I guess Polly Shore uses his toothbrush, and <clears throat> Ramius is like, he was using my toothbrush, and... It's like I dunked it in some. I dumped. I dunked it in Olivia's scope. <laughs> I will not have them use my tools of hygiene. 
Um, yes. <laughs> so they get locked in, and the dome is sealed for one year because they're trying to maintain stasis. Yeah, they're trying to <laughs> prove that they can like main maintain like a perfect homeostasis with all of these. Like, there's like a rainforest section, a desert section, and like basically, I don't know, for some reason, trying to prove that they can do this. Um, there's a big argument that's basically like, should we open the dome to kick them out? Um, Faulkner decides that he doesn't want to do that because it compromises like their mission. Um, Bud and Doyle immediately start hitting on the two scientists, uh, like Kylie Minogue and I don't know, whoever the other lady is, Olivia. Yeah. And like... <laughs> Like, completely disregard that they have girlfriends and just, like, immediately drop every single hackneyed, like, pickup line possible. Are and... you tired? Because you've been <laughs> running through my mind all day. My, my favorite... Th- like, my, I think it's this scene that they do it where they start singing Iron Man. And Sp- yes. Like, they get Spider-Man and Iron Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> Iron Man, Iron Man, <laughs> just whatever an iron can. Oh, I was fucking losing it. <laughs> I also should state that I watched this movie, like, after a ten-hour shift. <laughs> so I was just, like, already in this, like, agitated... You started at a deficit. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, like, losing my mind and just agitated and, like... <laughs> it kind of worked in its favor a little bit now that I'm talking about it, but... Uh, my next note is Stephen Baldwin sucks in this. <laughs> um, he doesn't get as many good lines as Polly Shore does. That's for sure. Right okay. around this time, uh, Faulkner asked like if they have any dreams, and Polly Shore says to die and come back as a leotard. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> like this is a movie, and like that I. There was a bunch of stuff that I was like, I really just want to put, like, this stupid quote down, but, like, there's so many of them. Oh, it's just like, this is... rapid fire. Ridiculous. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a lot memorized just from watching it so much. <laughs> it's I, terrible. Like, Gosh. Um, there's, like, the scene... There's, there's a bunch of stuff about, you know, still kind of discussing both of them staying in the dome and how like they technically only have enough supplies to last like the five scientists for a year or whatever. So they, they tell Bud and Doyle, they're like, they're taking them to where they're going to be staying, which is just like a supply closet. <laughs> like they give them a trash bag as a fucking blanket. <laughs> it's a great idea. Uh, it's pretty fucking good. And then, like, they, they play rock, paper, scissors again to decide who's going to get the trash bag. Yeah, the, the pillow <laughs> and the, the trash bag blanket. The joke is that uh, Doyle always plays paper. So, like, Bud always knows to play scissors. Uh, but, like, it comes up, like, eight times in this movie. Um, they... <laughs> They get tired of, like, sleeping in the supply closet and decide that they're going to just go crawl in bed with Olivia and Kylie Minogue, which is very gross. <laughs> yes. That's uh, the, the standout scene where it's like, oh, no, this this is bad. Yeah, I don't remember there being any sort of, like ridiculous racism in like every other movie we do but there's some kind of like some pretty over the top 90s sexism going on yeah um they like the next day Bun Doyle are given a tour of the dome and basically they're just causing shenanigans the entire time like there's there's no moment in this movie that like Bud and Doyle aren't filling with just nonsense lines. Like, there's, <laughs> there's no sense of just, like, like, quiet in between shit. It's just rapid-fire oh, delivery it's... of just every line all five writers could come up with. They just crammed into it. Um, I don't remember what part this was for, but Faith No More's We Care A Lot is in this movie, and I was very yes. here for it. I just don't remember why. Uh, it is 
spoilers, everyone. It is after they have everyone in the in the dome for the party. I think no, it no, is they're what they're still fucking around and they're like doing the bungee diving off the top of the dome and uh, maybe all that's that. What it is. Yeah, it's during that montage of them yes. fucking around doing that. <laughs> Spoiler: There's about eighteen montages in this movie. <laughs> it is. They got their money's worth with the montages. My my notes for like whatever is happening next are just crazy because it's just. Faith no more, we care a lot. Kylie filleting a carrot. Monique's stepdad sucks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you, Biodome is a wild movie. Do you, do you think Kylie Minogue signed up for this movie after reading that scene where they just like, hey, can you blow this carrot? <laughs> they had to have paid her like a decent amount, right? She, I mean, she was, she's never really in the U.S. been, like, a massive star. She's always kind of been just, like... She's she's a known name. Yeah, like, you know? that, she had that one song kind of around the 2000s that kind of was real big. But I feel like before this, she was mostly, like, everywhere else she was huge. But in the U.S., she was just kind of, like, on this the This was going to be her big, her big U.S. break. Yeah. Biodome. Uh, well... At least one person in this movie's career survived it. <laughs> I mean, Polly Shores did for about two more years and like eight more movies, but... Three. Tenacious D. Tenacious D did, but it took him a while. Like, I don't think this... If this was 96, there was at least, what, four more years before their album came out? Yeah. Plus four or five. It takes time to craft a masterpiece, Nathan. I... Yeah, I, mean, I agree. That album is fucking great. I mostly remember them from being on, like, Jack Black being on Mr. Show all the time. Um, yeah, there's, like, another scene where it's just Bud and Doyle hitting on Olivia and Kylie Minogue, and Kylie's, like, talking about, running, doing, talking about fish crapping on rice. Oh, yeah, like, it's... It's Doyle and Olivia, and, like, Olivia's, like, swimming in this rainforest thing, and how, like, there's some, something they're doing that's, like, the fish poop is, like, helping them grow rice in the like, water. Like, fertilizes the rice, yeah. And then it's, like, Bud and Kylie Minogue, like, talking in, like, a garden she's working in, and she blows a carrot and then bites it off. Just to, I don't know, it's, it's pretty stupid. But then you get the one of the three best scenes in this movie, which is you cut to Monique at home seeing a news thing about Bud and Doyle being <laughs> locked in the dome, and you just get a bunch of shit with Russell, who is amazing. <laughs> his his line delivery is just like out of this world. Oh, it's perfect. It's, he he asked Monique for a beer, and she's like, "Why don't you get yourself?" And he's like, "I can't. I hurt my bladder rollerblading." <laughs> <laughs> it's so like a perfectly like like I almost like feel like stepdad. Well, I, I almost feel like he got hired, and then was just like, "I'm just gonna just act in this movie. Like I don't give a fuck." Like, and it. <laughs> Rules. It, it rules so hard. It works perfectly. I would, I would watch a just like spinoff movie of just his character. I want the prequel where he hurts himself. <laughs> Under underrated part of this scene is uh, they're like making fun of the Zapruder like footage, <laughs> and it's about a clown that like shot up a mall. So a cop shoots the clown, and they have like a little video on the news before he switches it, and you just hear. The cable guy go back and to the left, <laughs> back and to the left, which is okay. like, I guarantee you that joke was like a, something that none of the fans of this movie, when it came out, understood at all. Like it's just so random. I think that's why I like it so much. Is it has so much dumb shit like that, where it's like, what? Why is that in this film? <laughs> yeah, there's there's so much stuff that like again, like I just feel like all five writers wrote stuff and then just like crammed it all in as much as possible. It would explain a lot, honestly. <laughs> so, Monique and Jen show up at the dome and have, like, 
a quick talk with Bud and Doyle about how, like, they're staying in there for a year or whatever, and you get, like, Bud trying to suck on Monique's tits through the window. And, like, they're, like, making out through the windows. <laughs> It's so dumb. I also, like... I, f- I could see Bud and Monique being a couple. I can't imagine anybody dating Stephen Baldwin from this movie. Nope, like, <laughs> Not at all. Doyle's dreads are unbearable. Like, <laughs> the, like, 1950s dad in me was just like, cut that goddamn hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... After they talk to their girlfriends and how they're staying in the dome, you cut to everybody at dinner, and it's explained how, like, all of the food is soy. And, like, <laughs> Bun Doyle just, like, aren't having it. <laughs> there's, there's Stephen Baldwin's good line. He crams a whole bunch of soy in his mouth and then spews it out. <laughs> the fuck is this kibble? <laughs> Uh, like, I, all the scenes were, uh, like, like, both of them and then, um, the, the bug scientists are just perfect. Cause, like, again, like, all of his stuff, he seems, like, he genuinely seems like he hates both of those actors. <laughs> um, so you cut to... Uh, Bud and Doyle in the supply closet, like, going to sleep, and <laughs> you cut to my most hidden scene in this movie was the flashback of them as kids <laughs> playing a game where they're smelling each other's farts to guess what they ate. <laughs> the makeup, the, like, costume makeup department killed Stephen Baldwin's outfit. He's supposed to be, like, a goth guy. <laughs> and... He has the most ridiculous, like, wig that is very clearly a wig. Or he looks like a Sideshow Bob. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sideshow Bob hair. And he's got his face painted, and he has a nose ring that is on a chain that Polly Shore is holding, and he's, like, tugging him by. Like, <laughs> it's so dumb. I, I literally wrote down, I hate this. <laughs> Uh, but this fucking joke comes back again later. Um, I do think he's on cruising because of that scene. <laughs> um, uh, you, you then get a scene of the, the dude who's kind of like spearheading or like paying for this whole dome, kind of talking to Bud and Doyle, and they start talking about merch. And I don't remember who says it. I think it's Doyle, but he go like they're they're talking about like whatever they're gonna make, and he goes, "Those will sell better than Iron Maiden merch." <laughs> he brings up a uh, sap lubricated condoms. <laughs> they're talking about That's like so awful <laughs> anatomically correct action figures and uh, how could I God. You... You know if this movie would have been just, like, a massive success that, like, every Spencer's Gifts would have had, like, sap fucking condoms? 1,000%. I think they also bring up a, uh, like, sex talk radio. Like, environmental friendly, like, sex talk radio. Yeah. Like, sitting here thinking of you, (laughs) naked, thigh deep in tofu. Uh, my next note just says, montage of Bud and Doyle being dumb. (laughs) <laughs> that's where we care a lot so, comes in i think so uh like the whole movie basically is just a montage of bud and doyle being dumb but yeah this is where they're doing um like the football with the coconut and i think fishing at some point and like, yeah no he uh like gets knocked into the water because they're playing football. Oh yeah, fish gets in his pants, so he pulls the fish out of his pants and throws it at him. <laughs> and then like the purple sticky punch weed presentation, <laughs> and then the fucking bungee jump. I like... <laughs> playing golf with the uh, the goat. The yes. goat's the caddy. The. 
the bits, goat, the like goat, really bit, really. the goat is the best character in this movie. <laughs> um, then the goat come back like during the party scene. I feel I like, think so. I feel like or during goat. cleanup, whenever they're doing the uh, the yeah. line, everyone's like kind of dancing the line, and the goat's at the end. Yes. Um. You get, like, a quick scene of Monique and Jen, like, signing autographs for some reason, because now they're famous for being the girlfriends of the dudes in the dome. <laughs> but, uh, Rose McGowan also shows up in this scene. And, like, I, th- like, something about, like, her telling them about some, like, party or, like, environmental, like, get-together thing. And is this when... They kind of this when, uh, Jack Black and Kyle Gass show up. Yeah, I was gonna say, is this when they kind of like are realizing that they're like they're locked in there with those two like hot scientists and I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I wrote down Bud and Doyle hitting on scientists again. It just <laughs> it should be assumed that that's all they do. Oh god, my next note about them playing fucking Marco Polo in the the <laughs> fucking the, like, water the, the, the rain generator. <laughs> it's like like if they the two of them barely fit in it, and they're playing Marco like Polo four foot by four foot <laughs> tub, and they're playing Marco Polo in it, and it's just Polly Shore diving out of the way <laughs> of Stephen Baldwin diving at him. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> There are, like, stuff like that that's, like, so dumb that I'm like, alright, that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> it's just almost any time Doyle's talking that I'm just like, I hate this so much. <laughs> Get a scene of Bud and Doyle playing hide-and-seek, and Doyle runs in to hide in the bug room. And, like, I don't remember what the joke is, but he makes a joke about the Def Leppard drummer having one arm. <laughs> the The name of the... Species of butterfly that uh, Romulus is trying to get to to fuck so he can get more is a uh, Lepidoptera, and Stephen Baldwin just sits there for a second. And he's like, "Lepro, didn't their drummer lose an arm?" <laughs> this scene is awesome because this is like another one of those scenes where you can just tell that dude fucking hates him. But like, uh, Bud eventually like bursts in and finds Doyle in there, so they start chasing each other, just fucking wreck everything. <laughs> break all of the glass containing all of these butterflies so they're just everywhere yeah they all basically just like flee the room um after this like all the scientists are gathered together and like they all are complaining to Faulkner that they need to kick them out and like Faulkner is kind of still like you know I can't we can't fuck up the the mission because of these the two, like dome if, integrity. Yeah, like if we open the dome, like it's just gonna be all for nothing. I feel Which like is stupid. It, like I feel like they could have just opened it up like day one and let everyone out and then just yeah. locked it. And it's like, okay, we'll stay in it for another twenty-two minutes. It's also like at this point, it's probably been three days of their <laughs> like their one year. Um. Bud and Doyle feel bad about, like, all the bugs getting loose, so Doyle comes up with the idea of building a giant thing of flypaper. <laughs> but, there's, there's all of the butterflies, like, on it dead, yeah. and there's, like, a bird up there that's, like, kind of twitching its wing. <laughs> it, like, <laughs> uh, obviously the bug scientist just fucking loses his mind and starts screaming. Screaming. <laughs> um... At this point, all the scientists decide that they're just going to lock Bud and Doyle in the supply closet, I guess, for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, but they locked in the supply closet. Uh, like <laughs> They decide to escape and like by crawling through the air ducts, but Bud makes Doyle pretend to be a table so he could climb on him. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> um, they crawl through the air ducts and come out into a room that's got all of, like, the food supplies and also laughing gas for some reason. And so there's just, like, this five-minute scene of them just getting fucked up on laughing gas and eating all of these, like, Cheetos and, like, all of these <laughs> chips. and <laughs> Throwing syringes at each other. Like... 
<laughs> it was just like aimlessly taking like the fucking container of laughing gas and just smashing it into shit. Trying to hit each other with it. <laughs> Which I feel like those would explode if they just like hit a wall. Like a, their contents like under massive pressure. I feel like something very terrible should have happened to them. Polly Shore is not very strong, so I'm yes. not too worried about it. He does know good he knows karate though, so That's true. <laughs> <laughs> So, after this, like, after the scientists realized that, like, Bud and Doyle just ate a fuck ton of their supplies, like, all of basically their treats. And used all of the laughing gas. Yeah, well, that's what I meant by treats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bud and Doyle are banished to the desert portion of the biodome, and, like, the fucking stairs are, like, pulled up so they can't get out of it. Um, as... <laughs> As they're in this desert, and it's been, like, maybe three hours, they're just, like, start bearing all of their secrets to each other. <laughs> they're all, like, the dumbest Beavis and Butthead shit imaginable. So that, uh, Polly Shore was taking, uh, like, flamenco dancing <laughs> lessons, and... He didn't want to do it, so he put the flamenco dancer's outfit in Bud's, like, dad's closet or something. So his parents got a divorce because they thought, like, his mom thought that Bud was cheating on him with a flamenco dancer. Yeah, it wasn't like... (laughs) Some shit like that. wasn't the other one about, like, killing one of their pets, but it was, like, the most ridiculous, like, over-elaborate thing about, like... (laughs) The, The turtle. Yeah. Where it's like, well, like, I stepped on the turtle, so I basically, like, set up this entire elaborate thing that made it... To make it look like the dog ate it. Yeah. So they had to put the dog down. And there's, like, there's something about, like, something catching on fire, but... The chipmunk. The great chipmunk fire. Yes. Um. After this, they, like, see... They... They realize that there's, like, a wall... Like, one of the, like, the, the glass walls or whatever on the dome, they see a key in the door portion of it, and just, like, fuck off and leave. And all of the, like, as this is happening, Olivia and Kylie Minogue are kind of, like, pleading that Bud and Doyle should be let out of the desert. Um, they, they leave, and as they get out, they see, like, a hundred parking tickets on their car, and Doyle just, like, flips out and, like, dives at the car. <laughs> Um, it's amazing that they just got all of the parking tickets and never got towed. Yeah, it seems to be how it worked. Like the nineties, the nineties were a wild time. Um, they, they, uh, this is when you get the scene. Like they're, because I think I'm guessing. Like I remember all the tickets. I think the car was booted, maybe. Yeah, and uh, so they're like. I get like they I don't know I guess they're gonna like try and hitchhike but they decide to call and order pizzas which is where you get the scene with Russell and he's talking about he got a job because of Bill Clinton and <laughs> Stephen Baldwin's like only good line. <laughs> um, I think this I think Russell also talks about how and he Bud, mentions the uh, the environmental party that uh yes their girlfriends are going to. So and this, obviously uh, they get they get super jealous and concoct a plan to win them back by throwing their own party inside of the biodome. Bud and Doyle are the most like stereotypical dudes on the planet because it's literally like they treat their girlfriends like absolute shit and then just get super jealous when like any other dude is around. <laughs> It's just, like, every fucking stereotype of some, like, dude you see in any movie. Um, except that there's no way Stephen Baldwin would have a girlfriend. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they come up with this plan to throw a party inside the dome because they're extra stupid and they think this is going to impress Monique and Jen. Um, you cut to Monique and Jen at like whatever this environmental rally is where everybody's just like in a circle rubbing each other's backs, but Tenacious D is playing and it rules. Like they they definitely deserved at least another five minutes of 
screen time instead of like the 25 seconds you get of them. I want to hear that full song about saving trees. Yes. I... There's, I, I feel like they probably have, like, they probably wrote an entire song for that, and, like... Probably. I wonder... Have you, like, I wonder if there's a soundtrack for this. Like, I wonder if they are on it. See if you can find that little snippet of them singing, and we'll put it in random parts of the episode. <laughs> just, like, every ten minutes, to just put that in yes. there. And then just put, like... I'll just, like, just put their whole album at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> get fucking sued and kicked off band camp yeah it's fine um so as they're at this like environmental rally somebody comes up starts handing out flyers for like the party at the dome and you cut to just this massive fucking rager going on at the dome everybody just completely wrecking everything (laughs) like the fuck they've got a They've got a band inside playing, like, in the desert. It's just, like, like the like, worst people on the planet just treating this fucking environmental doom as just, like, just total garbage. <laughs> yeah. It's a high school party, but I'm, inside of a biodome. I'm pretty sure at one point you see the goat, and it's been, like, spray-painted, and... It runs off. Like that, yeah. Um... Obviously, Monique and Jen show up and are super pissed and, like, very, like, concerned about, like, how, like, they fucked up the dome. You cut to the next day and, like, basically everyone's left and everything's trashed. Monique and Jen are there, like, picking up trash. And, like, Bud and Doyle show up and they're just like, oh, wasn't that, like, a great party? We're fucking great environmentalists. (laughs) Nailed it, guys. Yep. Killed it. You guys definitely get what's going on. Um, Monique and Jen, I like, get like are like super disappointed and leave the dome. Bud Doyle kind of realize that they fucked up and they're coming up with like an idea on how to fix everything. Um, the scientists are basically just like everything in here is fucked up. We have no reason to stay. We're all going home. Um, Bud like Doyle. As the scientists are getting ready to leave, grabs the key out of the door that's, like, in the desert area. And it's just like, you guys can't leave. And, like, goes to lock the door and he's going to go swallow it. And then all of a sudden Russell shows up because he's still in there. Like, <laughs> Logan well, calls him by the wrong name. He's like, great party. Bob and Daryl. Great party, Bob and Daryl. And just fucking leaves. <laughs> it's perfect. After he leaves, like, you know... I think Bud just gives, like, a speech about how they need to do this, and Doyle swallows the key. And you get a montage of Bud and Doyle and the scientists working to fix the dome to the safety dance, which is a because, great, uh, great song. Was it Leaky, the the funder of the project, he, he just wants to shut the whole thing down and get everyone out of there. And they're all refusing because they're going to try and clean up the dome. So <laughs> they have a police force outside. And that was their tactic to try and get everyone outside of like outside of the dome is they were going to play music at them. And he's like, it'll work. It's torture. And they start playing safety dance. <laughs> I mean, I will die on the hill that safety dance fucking goes hard. Yeah, I'm fucking... safety dance fucks. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Like, like, (laughs) it's just the montage is just completely ridiculous, too. Just like every other fucking montage in this movie. They're, like, dancing through the desert, and (laughs) for some reason there's a little person, like, leading their line that they're dancing in, and then, like, in it. Uh, Romulus and uh, Polly Shore, Bud, they're sharing a toothbrush after dipping it in scope. He's like, here you go, friend! (laughs) They are the fucking grossest people. Because <laughs> uh, you also get, like, after, after like, this montage, it's, like, them in the supply closet, and they've built, like, hammocks out of, I th- like, I think trash bags, maybe? Some sort of supplies, they've built these hammocks, and they're in there, and they are playing the fart game again. <laughs> but it's all, like... You know, soy flavored soy, soy cakes with. Soy- <laughs> uh, 
Um, it's also like after this party, uh, Faulkner has just like lost his mind because he got vanished. No one knows where Faulkner is. He got like handcuffed to a, like a tree or something like a fence during the party. Just had to watch everybody like wrecking everything, and so now he's like. Behind, like, behind the scenes, it's kind of like trying to sabotage everything. And you find out that he's making bombs out of coconuts. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> the dumbest sense, I think, <laughs> that's ever been uttered on this podcast. I'm sad that neither of us thought about having a science corner to figure out if that was even possible. <laughs> Google coconut bomb and see what pops up. And so, like... But all of Bud and Doyle's hard work has, like, got the the biodome, like, headed back towards, you know, like, 100% homeostasis. Now Olivia and Kylie Minogue want to fuck the shit out of Bud and Doyle. But Bud and Doyle also have, like, a conscience, and they're just like, oh, we have girlfriends. We can't do yeah. this, but Doyle's, like, hardcore. Questions. <laughs> Doyle's, like, hardcore making out with fucking Olivia when Bud, like, makes this, like, fucking decision that they can't do it <laughs> like Doyle like give a fuck he's ready to go <laughs> is this is this where uh so they leave and close the door and after Bud and Doyle close the door they just start like humping the door yes. <laughs> it's like a good like 10 seconds but <laughs> yes like um there's something that, like, there's just kind of, like, stuff with Bud and Doyle doing something inside the dome, and they stumble across Faulkner's hideout, and, uh, like, unwittingly, like, Faulkner tells them something about these coconuts, and they, like, unwittingly start, like, helping him hide all of these explosive coconuts around. Uh, explosive coconuts is the name of my new indie rock band, by the way. <laughs> You can't hear it, but I am laughing to myself <laughs> so hard right now. Oh, God. Um, f- like, after they've like, kind of put all these fucking coconuts everywhere, um, like, Bud and Doyle kind of, like, realize what was going on, because I think, like, something happens where they trip and, like, throw one they're, of them on accident. They're playing, uh, they're playing football with the coconut. It's like, go catch! And- one of them runs and then trips while the other throws it and it goes out past him and explodes like off in the desert or something. Yeah, and so they kind of, they they put together like what's going on and they kind of confront Faulkner and he like, you know, they're just like, you know, we can, we can stop this or whatever, like we can fix this and Faulkner's having none of it and sets somehow sets a fucking timer for all these things to explode. I don't know how he tied all these coconuts together to all fucking go off. He's he's a goddamn scientist, okay? I Yeah, he's fucking much smarter than... Not, not a butterfly fucking one like Romulus. <laughs> Real. Literally butterfly fucking. Um, Bun Doyle, like, chase Faulkner through the dome... Um, they managed to stop the bombs going off as the like the door opens and they reach 100% homeostasis. As this happens, Falconer throws like one of the last coconuts at the front door as everybody's leaving, and it explodes. But like in that stupid cartoony way where everybody just looks out covered in soot. Um. Bud and Doyle and, like, Monique and Jen, like, reunite outside the dome, and, like, everything's fucking great. It's a happy ending. The dome was a success, like, I guess. <laughs> um, Until the explosion, anyway. Yeah. Uh, as, like, as everybody's celebrating, like, Bud Doyle and their girlfriends leave. They're driving around. Uh, Doyle... The rap scallion that he is has to pee again, and they they turn into another mall that's a nuclear power plant. <laughs> One that is so much more clearly not a mall <laughs> in the biodome. Like the whole screen is like green and covered in like toxins. <laughs> I can't like overstate just how these two are the dumbest people on the fucking planet. <laughs> 
so they pull into this like power plant and like the credits start and then i think the only other thing is you Sweet see big credit scene yeah you see falconer like running through the desert and I, uh he he runs through the through the desert and everyone was trying to figure out where he is or how he could have gotten out since he didn't go, didn't go out through the front and someone goes he must have found a key somehow which obviously <laughs> uh fucking doyle had eaten the key earlier so it's a poop joke nice yeah. little poop joke to end on or was digging through some shit um yeah this i am amazed this movie didn't get a sequel I am too, but I think for very different reasons than you're amazed that it didn't. <laughs> I mean, like, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I, as much as like the first time I watched this, like, I feel like I like it more as we were talking about it. But when I was watching it, I was just like, God, this is fucking terrible. Now I kind of see them in like a nuclear power plant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it eight years once they hit the like 30th anniversary. Everyone's gonna come around on Biodome. I mean, like... They're gonna be like, what a masterpiece that film was. Polly Shore and Stephen Baldwin aren't doing anything. Like, fuck it. Just give them $15 million again. Let them make this yeah. fucking movie. I'd watch it. We have, we have almost certainly spent $15 million on dumber shit. Oh, fucking constantly. The military. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Cut the military budget and give me so many Biodome sequels, please. Cut the military budget by like point zero 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 one percent and give them their fifteen million dollars. And <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's Biodome. Uh, they caused all kinds of trouble in that bubble. Oh yeah, those fucking. <laughs> rap scallions <laughs> I just wanted to work in the trouble in a bubble line at some point in this podcast that was my only goal big trouble in little dome <laughs> <laughs> now a big trouble in little china biodome crossover oh, would be amazing maybe that could get John Carpenter out of retirement a fucking weird like doom floating face thing Flo <laughs> hanging out in there get spray painted during a party like... <laughs> <laughs> um, all right so the next episode of this bonus one is going to be the pest uh which oh god I'm talking about this one uh <laughs> this is gonna be rough <laughs> so um all right i hope you suffer but why